So this is a short tutorial um, to help explain the motion graphics written assignment. You've got the assignment here in front of you um, and it's called motion graphics three examples. Essentially you'll be choosing three different examples more, more than likely from film like a, a sequence from a film, a short scene from a film, uh, maybe a title sequence from a TV show or a credit sequence. Um, there's a bullet point list down here that, that, that includes some of the other places that you can find motion graphics as well. Um, you'll be talking about the uses, the characteristics and the technological considerations. When you're talking about the characteristics, you're talking about um, what graphics are being used, how they move, what visual effects are being used and how those would have been created or what kind of layers might have been built up to get those final effects. For the technological considerations, um, you're essentially talking about frame rate, video format, screen ratio, um, and any kind of compression. Now, you can keep that quite simple to maybe a couple of paragraphs um, that just simply explain those elements. You don't really have to explain them for each of the um, examples, um, but we can talk about that a bit later on. And when you go down here, you can see that you're, you're being asked to make a, a report, an illustrated report. Illustrated means that you're essentially giving examples um, throughout the report. So you're saying this is what happens, this is how it's been made, and this is the kind of effect it's creating. And you want to be using um, exact time points within the, uh, the title sequence or the film scene. Um, so you can say exactly when that that happens at the, the section that you're talking about it's got the usual kind of past merit distinction things here um, the criteria explaining for a merit with examples um, and critically discuss for a distinction that would be a, a slightly deeper um, discussion and maybe maybe even having some comparison between um, different motion graphic sequences or even um, explaining that a certain scenes wouldn't have perhaps been as effective without the um, the motion graphics or the video compositing. Um, moving on to the PowerPoint that I've got to go with this. Uh, this kind of helps explain it a little bit better possibly maybe in a bit more detail. It's got a checklist behind my head there I'll just move that down there. Um, so just make sure you've got um, a short introduction, you've got three examples, um, you've got a range of different uses of motion graphics um, so, and video compositing. So you're not just talking about three different um, film sequences, you might be talking about a film sequence and a TV title sequence and something else, uh, maybe a website. Uh, you, you're explaining the motion and the video compositing and you're f explaining the technical considerations like frame rate and codex. Just pop myself back there. Um, so you've got... Um, what have I got here? All oh, right. So this is um, some of the examples that you could find um, that you know about already, like text. You can have information boxes or credits or a title that comes across. Um, Graphic images might be pictures, shapes, backgrounds, animated, computer generated um, images could be gun blasts or special effects that you might see in a film um, and green screen um, layering up visuals. That's what that video compositing means. Now you can find examples quite easily of green screen scenes on YouTube. So I would suggest you go to YouTube and find a scene that's being explained. Um, by somebody on YouTube um, so you can find Marvel films being explained you can find all sorts of different films um, where they're, they're explaining how certain scenes have been made so here's an example um, of uh, where video compositing has been used and I'll let you watch that it's a very very good example um, and you're quite welcome to use any of these examples within this PowerPoint this Harry Potter one's a very good one as well um, now, I might have to move myself again. Um, topics for your analysis. This is really kind of getting into the merit and distinction, really, um, for how you discuss your motion graphic examples. Um, the density of information is, is essentially what's happening in the sequence. 
um, it's it's what happens at the same time it's identifying all the elements in filming I'm just reading it out now but essentially it's it's going to town on explaining exactly what's happening in the in the film sequence or the TV sequence to make it work so you might have found an example that's got a lot of things going on at the same time and then later on there might not be so much happening in terms of visual effects um, in in terms of motion graphic in uh, sorry video compositing examples quite often you'll find that there's lots and lots of layers it's not just one green screen you might have um, a number of different layers to build up a background and then you'll have another layer with some um, maybe some animals or some um, tie fighters flying across the screen or something like that so when you're looking at a scene from say Star Wars um, you'll find that there's lots and lots of depth to the, the number of layers that are being built up screen tempo is you're trying to f trying to explain how um, fast things move and how the, the motion graphics help um, create excitement in the finished sequence so it might be that the um, graphics move in quickly and they move out quickly or they might come in slowly they might have a rel it might be quite a relaxing sequence possibly because of this the speed at which these graphics happen and or the the uh, composited scenes interaction with the audience is um, really quite simple really if you've got anything in your graphics that give you information such as names um, news anything like that anything that's to do with giving the the, um, the audience any kind of information so it might be that you've um, you've got different shots in there in your sequence that might um, I don't know zoom in on somebody's face and give you some information about how they're feeling but you're, you're really kind of looking at how the, the maybe the video composite the composited videos might um, build up a scene and help you feel like you're really in that in that place then finally the technical considerations the frame rate the video format the screen ratio now to help you explain that I have found a few videos um, for you from our friend YouTube um, these really explain nice and simply like I say you don't need to explain it in too much detail um, essentially um, you need to just explain what frame rate is um, what the UK um, and the American frame rate standards are and why you might want to shoot at a higher frame rate or even a lower frame rate so you might find that animation animated films um, are filmed at a lower frame rate for, for example and uh, you might find that or well, you will find that some sequences in um, movies are filmed at a higher frame rate for a reason um, maybe an aesthetic reason or maybe they want to slow the footage down at a later date um, the main thing to point out with frame rate is the compatibility though really so when you're making a motion graphic sequence you need to make sure that you're using the correct frame rate um, as agreed by the, uh, the the company that you're making the film uh, the, the graphic sequence for essentially Codex and containers, there's more information now. I am really going to keep this short because I want to maybe talk about this in a bit more depth another time. But you can go through some of these um, links and information yourself. Essentially, um, the codex, um, the, the main codec we use is H.264 um, MPEG-4. Um, and that is slightly different to the container, which is the um, whether it's a .mov or a .avi. Uh, and again, it's really what you need to do is explain that you need to be using the correct one. That it's going to give you um, the least amount of compression. In fact, no compression at all. Um, so um, any kind of format that compresses the video and makes it smaller for some reason or reduces the quality to make the file size smaller is, is something to stay away from, definitely. Um, there's another video about codex there. It's not it's not very interesting stuff um, here. Uh, we all know about aspect ratio, um, but aspect ratio is very important as well. So if you've made a uh, I'll just move myself around again, if you've made a a sequence in the wrong aspect ratio, then that's going to be quite difficult to um, squeeze it into the correct aspect ratio, and it might mean that you need to go back and make it all again. So it's very very important to get that right. Um, it's if you could also include the um, the format 
and the aspect ratio that you used for your TV title sequence and explain what you used and why you used it, then that would be a great thing to add into this assignment. And like I say, you don't really need to have pages and pages about these technical considerations. It could just be a short paragraph on each. Um, and this is just a paragraph from the exam board. Um, and it really doesn't say an awful lot, really. Um, it's just saying that codex compress and decompress video and it's it's good to make sure that you've got the right one um, that doesn't mess up your um, video quality essentially your film quality so that's kind of what they're looking for it? and they're making a mountain out of a molehill really it's it's really meant to be it's quite a simple thing that you could explain really quite quickly and I'm sure you're you're wishing that I'd explain this video a bit quicker actually because I seem to be running into quite a long time of this. So I'm gonna think I'm gonna finish there. That's the almost the last slide. That is the last slide. Um we're done. We'll call it a day.